Now we have Martin Zubel, Hellas, Peter Pelt, Frada and Stephen Grant are doing the talk on the DSA BOF. Well, hi, this was meant to be a BOF, not quite a talk as such, so we only have about 10 minutes of things to say, and then we're hoping to open it up for discussion. So I don't, I don't know if we're going to have an effective discussion with you people way in the back, but we'll see what we can do. <laughs> what was that? So this is three quarters of us. <laughs> Lucas seems to have disappeared recently. We're, we've sent out a search party, but haven't yet found him. Um, Let's see if that works better. Uh, yep. So we've we've all been DSA for two, three years now. I guess we pretty much have our routines down, and we know what each other does well <laughs> and badly. <laughs> um, yeah. Most of what we do, most of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis is just keeping the lights on. Most things run, these are Debian machines, most things just keep running without much effort. But we need to do security patching and maintain true routes for the porter boxes and deploy new services and the occasional break fix sort of thing. At, at this point we're up to about 135 machines spread around in 35 or so hosting locations. We're trying to reduce the number of hosting locations just to reduce the complexity of fixing things when things do go wrong, but 35 is still a bit high. Hmm? Yeah, these are some of the tools we use um, without something like Puppet for configuration management, 135 machines would get a bit unwieldy. Um, Git is really quite nice for enforcing a team workflow on us and making sure that our changes are documented and traceable and, more importantly, revertible when we do the inevitable thing wrong. UDLDAP is a custom interface to LDAP-based account management um, some of our hosters aren't perfectly connected, so rather than doing dynamic lookups against the LDAP tree, we create flat files and export them. And that's, well, from a user point of view, that's largely what UDLDAP gives us. Mune and Nagios for trending and monitoring, and request tracker so that we don't forget about all the things people ask us to do. Some things. Um, that you guys can do to help us. We, several times a year, we have to chase people up and say, you know, please, could you delete the 450 gigabytes of porn in your home directory on Merkle or something? And it, it would be useful if we didn't have to do it quite as often. Um, another thing we end up doing rather frequently is finding that the load on some machine is 240, and it turns out somebody's written a network scanner that is destroying the machine as it's trying to work away. And inevitably, the person meant no harm, but in the meantime, it's a little bit of a pain for us. So if you could please restrict really quite heavy things to your own machines or come talk to us before running it, that would be useful. The dynamic websites thing is mostly because this is Debian, people come, people go, and we find that somebody's written a PHP web application 12 years ago, forgotten about it, and suddenly it's still running, and suddenly we have some script kitties living on our machine, and we'd really rather not have that. So if, if you can find any way to take your dynamic application and export flat files to serve by web, that's much, much safer and much, much nicer for us. Yeah, and if, if you want a re 
redundant service re with some resiliency, it makes it a lot easier for us to mirror the data around. Um, and lastly, just generally try not to piss us off. <laughs> so there's some areas where we need some help. Um, most of our ports are in pretty good shape, but some of them are still a bit ropey. We could use some help with kernels. We have several machines that just cannot run distro kernels, and that's something I'd really like to get us away from. I, I feel that it's... One of the things I'm unhappy about is that we cannot self-host as a distribution. We can't run our build Ds on our kernels. I th I'd like that to go away. Um, also, we've been, over the last year or so, giving porters access to maintain the porter box to roots so that you know, they can fulfill install requests, they can work with maintainers who are having portability issues directly and keep adding software until something sticks. So if you're interested in helping out as a porter, please talk to us. We'd like to give you the access to do it. Um, we're looking for and evaluating several different web auth systems. Um, I, what did we decide was probably the best of breed OAuth or one of those? Shibboleth, I don't know. But we don't have a working implementation of any of them. We'd, we'd like to. There's an awful lot of web services in Debian that you have to log into, and we'd like to make it all single sign-on or at least single password. Um, but if any of you are good at that sort of thing, come have a word with us. That would be useful. Um, monitoring and trending, you know, there's inevitable things like how to make Nagios treat the v4 address and the v6 address of a host as though it's one host. Um, trending, munin scales terribly. Um, we have a machine right now with a constant load average of 50 trying to write RRD files and failing. Yeah, it's, so if we're looking for ways to make trending scale, if any of you have any experience with that, we'd, we'd like to hear about it. And if you, the last one, Python coding, we use the word Python very, very loosely. It's Elmo Python from the dawn of time. Uh, um, <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's Perl with hash bang user bin Python at the top of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> So if, if any of you feel like hacking on a very nice code base, <laughs> that would be useful too. There's a number of areas for improvement. And uh, yeah, lastly, we're not going to be here forever. This, I mean, what I said earlier about this being Debian, people come, people go. I'd like to, I'd like to start bringing people in so that by the time we fall under a bus, there's somebody to step in and replace us. So um, I think we've discussed it over the last few days. We we'd like to start a DSA trainees program. We'd like to start people who've been working with us. We'd like to start handing out root access, and but tell them they don't yet have authority to you know make architecture decisions or speak for the team or whatever. But start bringing them in in the same way the FTP masters are with their FTP trainees. Um, and then finally, that URL. We have a list of things we'd like. So if, if you feel like giving us a pony. Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hang on. I think that that's unhappy about that. Ah, what have you done? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that's done. Never. Anyways. <laughs> hey, okay, we won't try the browser again. <laughs>
So, yeah, I think if we can just open this up. There's some contact addresses. The first one at list.debian.org is read by a number of people, including the porters who have access to the two routes, including local admins who can reboot a machine for us if it's wedged and we don't have out-of-band access. So almost always that's your best point of contact because more people read that list. And a number of people can fulfill requests, not just us usually. The Second one, Debian admin at Debian.org, is just the four of us. So if for some reason there's a privacy or security issue or something you feel that needs to go to the attention of the smallest possible group, that would be it. But as I say, otherwise, please use the, the more open one. Um, you can find us on hash Debian admin at, uh, on IRC, but please don't. There's, a, there's an awful lot of chatter in the channel, and it makes it difficult to keep track of what's actually important. So uh, if, if you want to do something like f ask for software to be installed on a port or two route, please don't drop into the channel and ask for it there. It almost certainly will get missed. And if it's a bigger job, RT is a very nice place to track it. You know, if it's not something we can just bang out in 10 minutes and move on, RT is a good place to make sure it doesn't get lost. So. Questions? Oh. <laughs> uh, I work as a network and system administrator at a Hungarian university, and I maintain a shibboleth-based identity provider, so I would be glad to help you if, if it's needed. Yes. And yes, please. <laughs> And, and, and the other thing is, I don't know what you are using for monitoring. We used to use uh, uh, Manin, but uh, uh, we later uh, switched to CollectD, and it's much better handling uh, uh, many RRD, RRD files. Hello. Um, I was, uh, I'm interested in uh, seeing Debian make better use of the uh, web of trust that we have, and I'm wondering if there's been any thought about doing things like certifying all of the host keys uh, in the OpenPGP web of trust so that we don't have to look them up in db.debian.org uh, using something like the monkey sphere, um, and also possibly allowing users access so that, uh, that they can, we can do key revocation and things like that with SSH access via uh, the web of trust, since we have that in place. Uh, for Debian. So, so for SSH host keys, you could just look them up in DNS, since DNS is signed nowadays. Almost no one actually has a resolver that can handle, almost no one has a resolver that can handle uh, signed DNS right now. So and, and, and furthermore, signed DNS is reliant on <laughs> central authorities. We have our own authorities here, so it would be nice to actually make use of that, I think. Do, do you have a resolver that actually checks the DNSSEC? Yes, and so do all of the, all Debian.org machines. But we're not, we're not on Debian.org machines all the time, we're on our own machines. Yeah, m my own laptop, my own desktop, they all do DNSSEC. And maybe so should yours. Oh, and, and as Tolma points out, there's a wiki page that explains how to do it. So maybe oh. all of you should try to set it up. Okay, so these are not, these are not mutually incompatible operations here. They, they are not, true. Um, we have, there are several other ways to get the <laughs> SSH host keys in a secure manner. You could get them off dbdebian.org, and the SSL certificate is signed by SPI, and their certificate is signed by PGP key. And of course we could all uh, we could also manually PGP sign all the keys, but I don't think that would scale. You don't add, so the tools that are available, I'd be happy to talk with you about them further, and I'd be happy to help you get it set up, but it's not about, it's not a, it's not a manual process. The tools are actually very streamlined. You just, all, all the, the servers in the server room here already have their, their names and their keys published in the web of trust, signed by me, um, and it's a, it's a trivial process to do. I'd be happy to help with it getting set up. So could you also just sign the Debian SSH host keys? Uh, I could if I had access to the machines, um, but 
the, the, the host keys need to actually be self-certified. No open PGP key that doesn't have a, a self-certification is considered legitimate. So it, so it has to be opt-in from the admin side first. So that's, I'm happy to help you get it set up uh, if, you're, if you're willing to take volunteers. Maybe we should talk about this later, but it seems likely that we could do this. Okay, if it's great. If we can automate it. Thanks. Um, so there's been another sort of compromised um, infrastructure on other distros. I think Fedora had some issues in a few months ago. And I was wondering uh, how did you felt, well, no one is ever immune to some heart attacks, but how, I was wondering what is the current like, level of attacks uh, against the Debian infrastructures and also um, how you feel like yeah, um, the current practices of DSAs are let, let, leave the Debian project in a better shape than other free software projects. Um, so I think that, I mean, Debian org machines have been hacked in the past. Fedora's been hacked relatively recently. Red Hat had an archive problem. Um, and yeah, this will happen again. The usual way in is account compromise of some description weak passwords on a user account, somebody's laptop is left unlocked, something. Um, the, we've done a few things. We've stopped password-based SSH logins, which raises the bar, at least. It doesn't make anything go away, of course, but it at least raises the bar and gets rid of that avenue of attack. Um, for privilege escalation, we have separate passwords for sudo than we do for talking to LDAP. So even if you can brute force an LDAP password, that doesn't give you your sudo password on the machine. Um, all the machines have host-based firewalls so that even if you can get onto the machine and get a service running or you know, if the usual compromise a PHP web script and start a shell on a different a shell listener on a different port, that won't work. So it, none of these are perfect, and I assume we will be compromised in the future, but we're, we're trying to at least raise the bar to make it more interesting to attack Ubuntu. <laughs> <laughs> also, we try to run recent kernels on most of our machines, which kind of ties in into the being able to self-host story because if that, there is no kernel on FTP Devon org that we can run, somebody has to manually build kernels for all the machines that are affected and, well, that sometimes just doesn't happen. Thanks. Um, Matthew Johnson on IRC asked me to mention that it might be interesting to use the monkeys monkey sphere application. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that has been asked just before by Daniel. <laughs> I don't know, you, you were t talking about the kernels. Uh, I'm interested if you are using some uh, security enhancements. Uh, I, I, I don't necessarily mean uh, security enhanced Linux, but uh, other ways like GR security or, or anything. Uh, the simple answer is no. <laughs> we probably should investigate some of these, but uh, my experience of SE Linux with Red Hat things at work has turned me away from wanting to play with them right now. No more questions. <laughs> Hi guys, do you have any major improvements, major infrastructure upgrades or whatever that you want to, you know, planning that you want to tell us about? Um, a few of the things we're, we've been discussing is currently DMs and NMs don't end up in our LDAP tree until they request access to, say, a porter box to debug a problem. I'd like to start streamlining the process so they enter LDAP 
fairly early in their road to joining Deb Debian. And this, I think we can do things like give DMs and NMs access to porter boxes as a matter of course to you know, make it easier on them as maintainers. And, but that, if we do something like Shibboleth, that will also give them a unified login to all the Debian web services and those sorts of things. So I, I think it, and it you know, might give them a sense of belonging that not having, them, not having an account anywhere in Debian currently does sort of push them out a bit. So I'd like to... I'd like to bring them in a little bit like that. I can't remember what else have we talked about that we're... Um, one, one other thing is that we are currently looking for um, security mirrors in, in Asia and in Africa for, uh, especially. So if you know persons or if you know companies willing to host a security mirror in Asia or South Africa, Southern Africa, Northern Africa, speak with us so we can get the security mirror which is currently running on GeoDNS um, also for their continents. And I think the... What is it? Hmm? Um, the other thing we talked about um, is uh, getting, um, well, Nagios and, and Munin IPv6 uh, ready. Um, we need someone just to do the codings. Thanks. So, yeah, um, I completely agree with Stefan that having um, identities collected in, a, in separate UDL DAP tree connected in some way and having a single page listing all the people which are doing stuff for Debian will help a lot in giving a better sense of belonging to people who are helping Debian. I don't understand whether it would be possible to integrate into that also the, let's say, Alioth authentications, because a lot of work which is done in Debian is actually done in Alioth. So even before becoming a DM, or maybe if you're doing something which is not related to packaging, coding, translation, or just committing a patch, it would be there. So have you considered having, pushing the unification even more further? So everybody who has an account in Debian Zeldap gets an account on Alias. There's an import script. But we don't pull the other way on purpose because the, well, partly because it's a pain, but partly because literally anybody can create an Alias account. And that's just slightly too open for Debian Zeldap for my taste. Um, it would be nice to be able to migrate, you know, somebody who's part of eight projects on Alias but hasn't started NM and is doing quite a lot of work. It would be nice to be able to trivially migrate that account into our LDAP when they start NM or something. Yeah, I agree. But right now, how to programmatically decide that that person is doing an awful lot of work on Alias and should have an account in our LDAP is not straightforward. I think, it, I think the current approach of having them ask is not a bad one. Uh, actually, I've. Um, I think. I think. I never had to complain to GSA. So actually, I'd like to thank you for all that work because I mean you deserve it. Uh, <laughs> And, and, so, and I, was like, like I was pleasantly surprised to actually see how much of the Debian infrastructure is actually available behind IPv6 networks. And to tell, to tell one story, I, had, I, had, so I have uh, IPv6 at home for a few months, and at some point our provider stopped like, working for IPv4, but I had, with the IPv6 network was still running, and I was really puzzled because I didn't understand that first what was wrong with my network because all the Debian website was still working. <laughs> well, the other thing we would maybe also like to do in the 
near future, to, regarding to Steve's question, is to get these uh, sync proxies on DSA maintained machines so we have access to the sync proxies. A sync proxy is a machine <laughs> that uh, <coughs> FTP master um, host logs into and starts uh, the pulling of the archive from FTP master and then distributes that to the local mirrors on and, and, uh, country wise. Uh, hi, Elmo still has an account on the European Sync Proxy. <laughs> so, if you want an account, you just have to ask. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's the procedure. Well, we want to take over the machine, but we have to talk to you about that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> about that. Yeah. We'll start with an. We can start with one account. <laughs> <laughs> The account would be rude. <laughs> Everyone okay. seems to be happy with this. So, oh, Lucas. I don't think it's user visible. So, um, have you considered? <laughs> uh, have you considered finding a way to let uh, DDs install build dependencies themselves in uh, Potter Shoots? We, we actually were talking some about this um, yesterday. yesterday, about uh, sort of ephemeral truths on the machines. But we need to start looking at things like Linux containers or process namespacing or something, because the traditional truth-based systems we're using right now are just too easy to break out of. And so giving somebody sudo in the true root is giving them root on the machine. And that's, it, we, it's not so much a matter of trust as we just have too many people, you know, several hundred people. Somebody will, somebody will have an account compromised. And then if they actually can get root on a machine, that's actually trouble. So, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We already have a, a larger group, but it, I think you want every DD to be able to just install their build dependencies, and I think that's that's probably not a bad thing to work towards. We just need to find a secure way yeah, to well, do it. I, I just need to be able to sudo to run uh, apt get uh, build dep. That's all, uh, and it's already done in the build on the buildies. Uh, Michael Michael Vokes wrote a um, wrapper which we're using on the uh, canonical porter boxes, which admittedly are only within the company, so it's a uh, a smaller set of uh, people who are motivated to do anything bad with it, but um, uh, it, uh, I think it's a Python app wrapper, it only allows you to, uh, it doesn't allow you to interact with uh, maintainer scripts in any interesting way, etc. Uh, so if uh, you'd like to use that on uh, Debian porter boxes, then you know, I'm sure you'd be interested to help. Does it allow you to do the dpackage conf file prompt? Uh, I believe not. Because that's, that's a sure way to get root. Uh, so. I, 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 I believe it does not, indeed. OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, upgrades and so on. Bad maintainer scripts happen. You end up with a broken true root, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I want to uh, sell you my uh, tool for doing this kind of thing, which is called uServe, and I'll tell you about it later will be in the bar if the salesmen for the various tools could line up. <laughs> Anybody else? Um, not so much a comment, well, not so much a question, but more of a comment and a thank you. Um, I don't know if most people here won't be aware that with a huge amount of help from Weasel a few weeks back, we set up a totally new service, uh, a VM for running uh, CGI scripts on. We now have a CD image search tool, which um, from first talking about it to having a totally new system up and running and application and everything took, what, 10 days, two weeks maybe? 
Um, I'd just like to say publicly, thank you very much for that. Um, you guys rock. Okay. Uh, I thought I'd do something stupid and actually force myself uh, to do the voice over IP server by announcing it publicly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the, uh, we've got voip.debian.net running for way too long without ever doing anything useful with it. The config uh, file is called debcon7.xml. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and there's a phone upstairs which people can make calls from which uses that. And we really ought to be able to work out some way of giving people uh, logins to it from their mobile phones uh, so that they can make conference calls and things like that. So if I announce it now, then I might actually do it in a few weeks' time rather than saying, oh, yeah, I'll do that really soon. <laughs> um, a question from my side. Are there any services um, currently under the Debian.net domain which you think might be useful on the Debian.org domain? Forums. Okay. Um, <laughs> good. No, good. No. If, can, yeah. <laughs> um, can people let us know? You know, send, send us mails what you'd like to have moved in, and we can start talking about it. Can you put the mic on? Oh, yeah. Send us mails, and we'll start talking about what we can move in. I think having actually important project services running on, you know, in somebody's basement is probably not the right way to do it. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, not you. I, yeah. <laughs> and. Um, I think we're starting to wind down, but is there anything you want from us? Is there anything we're not doing that we could be doing or should be doing? Hmm? <laughs> yeah. Um, a better notification of when you're going to upgrade a box from Lenny to Squeeze what would be nice. For example, for the wiki host, I uh, kind of spent a few hours fighting fires. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> um, we try to send mails to Debian Infrastructure Announce, but uh, yeah, mistakes happen. <laughs> well, the, if you are not aware of the Debian Infrastructure Announce mailing list, it's a good possibility now to subscribe to that mailing list. Um, most of the infrastructure changes or announcements for um, hosters to be uh, being down for a weekend or so are sent to that mailing list. So if you want information on that, subscribe to that mailing list. Well, if we send an email, then it might go to Devon Infrastructure <laughs> Announce. We don't always send emails. Uh, UDLDAP stands for user dear LDAP, and it's Debian's way to manage user accounts in LDAP. So it stores user passwords, SSH, uh, SSH user keys, email forwarding address, anti spam configuration, whatever you want in LDAP, and exports files, and these get pushed to all the Debian org machines. So the machines actually do not do an LDAP query, but just um, get things exported from the uh, UD LDAP master to plain text files, and those files are synced around to the, to the machines. Which reminds me that somebody wants to remove uh, libnssdb from Debian. So would anybody know any replacement for that? Because we are heavily using that. <laughs> I think it's Berkeley DB. We, well, we actually write out the input data and then do the DB compilation on the end machine. But yeah, it's um, NSSDB, which is TDB or whatever that format is. Or we should ask the release managers to not remove well, NSSDB. It will. <laughs> 
<laughs> Once they do, they, they won't be able to log in anymore, so. <laughs> Okay, I think we're about out of time. Thank you all for coming. Um, we'll be around. So. <laughs>